It's time for a Red Star Daily Update. This is kind of a fun segment style that we're going to roll out here during the summer of 2024 to really help you guys with this growing season because it's different than any other growing season that we've ever had. So my pleasure to have, I feel like, most of the team from Red Star sitting in here in the studio. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Why don't we go through a quick set of introductions here just to get the audience familiar with who you are. Brody, why don't you kick us off? We'll just kind of keep going around the table. Yeah, uh, my name is Brody Benton, um, regional business manager for, for Red Star Fertilizer. Live here not too far from uh, from the studio um, over just uh, south of Ames and covering parts of Nebraska, Iowa, Missouri for Red Star. Awesome. Thanks for being here. Ryan Molinoff from Nebraska. Um, I own Red Star, me and my wife, so... Um, we're cold and wet from here to there. So I should have started off with the boss, right? But uh, maybe the real man in charge is Tom, the last one. Here. I don't think so. Uh, Tom Stanton, I uh, work with Ryan and Brody, and I kind of manage the Red Star branded business, which is our specialty fertilizer part of the business. So I love it. Thanks for coming in, and I look forward to these segments being uh, a pivotal part of our Friday releases here for our audience. So let's start off with... What's going to be different between the 24 crop compared to the 23 crop? Which one of you guys wants to jump on that first question? You mean the fact that we've had more rain in the last two weeks than we had all last year? Yeah, that. Exactly that. <laughs> that's that's created, I think, a complete set of challenges, right? I mean, last year we planted the crop, hope we'd get enough rain to get it germinated, get it out of the ground. And now we're trying to figure out how do I get it to push through a two and a half inch crust that's right. on its way to the surface. But it's completely different uh, this year versus last year. And from a fertilizer perspective, it's really changed everything that we're looking at. Uh, Brody and I were just talking on the way down here. You know, everything we planned for V4, V5, V6 corn application, you now got to sit and go, I think I need to redo it. Right. Just based on the conditions, you know. And, you know, right now we got corn, V3, V4. It's the ugly duckling stage, as everybody calls it. The, the seminal root system's there. It's got plenty of water. It's like, I don't have to grow. I can just sit here. I got all the water I need. Uh, and at the same time, we need nitrogen. We need potassium. We need sulfur. We need boron. We need zinc to, you know, to get going and growing. And it's not there, right? Or it doesn't have access to it. And until we get those nodal roots out at V6, V7, you know, we're probably not going to get that growth. So there's some things that we need to do right now physiologically we can spray some things on it that are going to jump start it and get it growing and right. that's kind of what you and i just talked about brody right so you know a product new product of ours called SunFed. um high amount of calcium manganese magnesium um uh, zinc but then has you know the other things from an iron boron standpoint to drive photosynthetic activity move those sugars down to the root zone so we can accelerate that that uh, formation of sugar and root exudates so that we have not only just fertilizer there but the plant pushing those exudates so we have the biological system that's engaged with the plant too because between v6 to v14 that's when we make a high amount of our carbohydrates in the plant and those carbohydrates we need to conserve them store them in the plant so they can be put into grain fill i mean you look at pretty much every nutrient on the uptake curves that goes into grain, um, there's a very high percentage that gets translocated from within the plant to that early grain fill. And so the more that we can put into our savings account now, the more that we can use either for that or, you know, be able to go through some of those stressful periods when we have a higher amount of respiration, the plant has to repair itself. So, um, so that's why this is, this is one of the most important stages, even though we feel like, oh, you know, it's a small plant. I don't want to go out there and spray it because it's covering a lot of the ground. Well, this is from a hormonal structural standpoint where we can do the most. And, and one of the things too, that SunFed's going to do is it's going to increase transpiration. And right now we have all this moisture. So we actually want to transpire, respire it and get it up through the plant and out into the air so that our roots can breathe and get, get more oxygen. So I think the faster we can do that. And I think, you know, a couple of quarts of SunFed per acre right now is a really, really good option for growers to take a look at to jumpstart that crop and get it growing. Yep. Yeah, I think that's a big factor for what our listeners are dealing with. But I want to know, is there any advantages that we have to having all of this moisture early compared to some of the past crops? So just to, to Tom's point around transpiration, 
So think back in 22, 23, we didn't have much subsoil moisture at all, especially you, Ryan, out in Nebraska. I mean, you guys had absolutely nothing. And I use this analogy where, you know, our plant is nothing more than a straw on the ground. And it wants to pull water through it because it's going to pull nutrients through mass flow through that what's called transpiration process. Um, Well, in wanting to drive transpiration, you also have to have moisture in the reservoir. Because if you don't have moisture in the reservoir, it doesn't matter. And it's like my kids sit in the back seat of our of our car with their big Slurpee drink that they've drank all of it, and then they're just sucking every last bit of it. That's what our plants were like last year. Have that gargling sound. This year, we have subsoil moisture. We can pull tons of nutrients too, because naturally they're cycling with heat and moisture. Things cycle. Um, and so now is the time when when we can really influence that plant from a structural standpoint. But back to that transpiration. That's great. Well, guys, I appreciate you stepping in studio to share some segments with our listeners. This is the first one of many. I'm looking forward to the rest of our spring and summer being full of some great information. So uh, if they want to ask you questions on yourselves, what's the best way for them to look up? Look us up on our website, uh, www.redstarne.com. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you.